Hello, friends. How are we doing out there? So this is uh, Alpha Shade 19. I'm coming back to you guys with another quarterback review. So this time today, we're going to be doing Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen. So I pulled up Josh's stats here. And Josh Allen, just like the last guy we talked about, Lamar Jackson, was drafted back in 2018. <clears throat> But the thing is, he was drafted before Lamar Jackson. So, a lot of people, you know, think if a guy is drafted before somebody, that they're better than them. In this case, even as a Ravens fan, I would have to say that, yeah, Josh Allen is potentially a little bit better than Lamar Jackson. Um, I think, you know, the numbers over the last few years definitely would suggest that Josh is doing better than Lamar, especially after last year. Um, you know, in terms of being a pure passing quarterback, he's definitely a better passer than, than Lamar Jackson. In terms of actually winning games and whatnot, I think Lamar has a better record. But Josh has uh, more playoff success. Uh, Josh was one game away from going to the uh, Super Bowl last season, and Lamar Jackson has never even been to the AFC Championship game. So, in terms of, like, success overall, uh, Josh Allen's team, the Bills, have had more success overall. Um, I mean, like, the one thing that is true is that, let me pull up Lamar Jackson's stats here again. Because these two are compared a lot. Um, for some reason his aren't as easy to find. These two are compared a lot, and the one thing I will say is Lamar does throw less interceptions, right? But he also has less touchdowns, you know, and less games under his belt. So you could say, oh, maybe Lamar would have more interceptions, uh, than Josh or around the same amount, but if he had played all the games last year. But as we found out last time when we did Lamar's uh, thing, you know, Lamar was 7-5 and five last year. <clears throat> and even though he has 31 interceptions, you know, Lamar would have had to throw 15 more interceptions just last year to even have the same amount of interceptions that... Josh Allen has, and I'm bad at math, so I know that took a little bit of, of a time there, but yeah, uh, Josh Allen has 15 more interceptions than Lamar Jackson, and uh, in all honesty, I'll be honest with this one, interceptions are not the only thing you have to look at in terms of a quarterback, you have to look at what the overall, you know, record is, right, Josh Allen's not, I don't, Win loss, win a loss record. You know, like, okay, that 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 doesn't tell me much. Okay, that just tells me it's a sixty-three percent, basically sixty-four percent of the time that he's won. All right, okay, so he's thirty-nine and twenty-two in his career. Lamar Jackson, let's see, Lamar Jackson is thirty-seven and twelve. So. Josh Allen has more wins, but he also has more losses. I mean, <clears throat> Lamar has played a few less games than uh, Josh Allen has. And remember, Josh Allen was a starter week one, right? Lamar Jackson has only played 58 games, and Josh Allen has played 61. So it's not that much more. But the reality is that Josh Allen was a starter uh, his whole first season as well, I believe. I think. I might have to check that out, but I'm pretty sure he was a, a starter in 2018 for the whole season. And the Bills were kind of still like a mess his first season. And Josh Allen didn't really get going until the second season, which is actually the case for both him and Lamar, but the thing is, his second season onward has been incredible. 
uh, it's kind of hard to hate Josh Allen. Right? Like, even as a Ravens fan, I still find myself kind of rooting for the Bills and Allen to do well because the Bills deserve to have some kind of su success, in my opinion, over, like, years and years and years of just disappointing seasons, right? And having to deal with the Patriots di dynasty and Tom Brady for years. And then, like, I think Josh Allen has a couple of games against Tom Brady. He would have had, he would have had to at least had like four games against Brady. I don't know what his record against Brady is, but he would have at least played him four times because Brady was in his division for two years uh, while he's been in the NFL. Right? And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, the Patriots, they had Cam Newton. That's right. They had Cam Newton 2020. And then in 2021, you know, uh, Mac Jones comes in exactly, who I think is another excellent quarterback. But uh, oh, not am I saying that right? Am I right on the name there, Mac Jones? Is that I'm gonna look that up, and make sure I'm right on that. Yeah, Mac Jones. Mac Jones came in last year, and uh, absolutely tore it up. But we'll get to his review later on down the line when we get to the Patriots. I'm doing an alphabetical order of the teams. Uh, so the next one should be either the Panthers or Bengals. Uh, well, the team City, I should say, exactly. Or in the Carolinas' case, the state. But anyway, going beyond that, <clears throat> Josh Allen has a pretty impressive career. You know, he's got a decent playoff record. Josh Allen playoff win loss win-loss record uh that's not true allen has appeared in a three post season game so far at the bills and his five wait has, and has five playoff games has a three and two record so he's a, a winning record in the playoffs he's three and two in a, uh, three and two in the playoffs and has a win against lamar jackson in the playoffs just last year i mean two years ago because uh, Ravens didn't make the yeah two years ago I remember that last year he had an overtime game against uh uh yeah uh, the uh Chiefs uh against Patrick Mahomes and a lot of people are starting to question the question of the uh the overtime rules of the NFL because of that game they're saying that maybe they should be looked at because uh, people should, or teams should be able to possess the ball at least once for both sides and whatnot. And, I mean, like, personally, I don't think anything has to be changed. I I mean, I feel like the rules are fine the way they are, but Bills fans got really upset about it because uh, they thought they would have had a chance to actually win the game if Josh Allen had been able to, uh, to, to get the ball. Uh, and like a lot of people think, oh, you know, whoever wins in overtime just is determined by the 50-50 coin flip. And the Chiefs won the coin flip, so they won the game. That's what the argument was. But that was definitely one of the best games of all time and potentially NFL history um, in the playoffs there in the AFC Championship. Well, not, not the championship game. I'm dumb. The AFC, uh, the AFC Divisional Round. Exactly. So yeah, that was that was a good game. That was a good game. Yeah, because the championship game was uh, the Bengals and Chiefs, and the Bengals obviously won that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, though, uh, yeah, the that divisional round game was really really good, and uh, it felt like it was the AFC championship game. So I'm wrong. Josh Allen never has been to the AFC cha championship game, but he does have a positive playoff record, and that's pretty good still. Um, so yeah, I think you know you look at Josh Allen's career, and I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this too, because let's look at uh, where is it? Go back here. So let's look at his numbers from 2018 to to 2021 here. This will be the end of the discussion, and I'll give a grade right after. So 2018, 
he was kind of bad. Like, these numbers were not good. He had more interceptions than touchdowns, right? And a rating of 67 overall. So you might be thinking, with a 52% completion percentage, which these numbers for the NFL are really, really, really bad. You might be thinking, how could he go from such a bad first season to having such a horrible season, uh, you know, as a starting quarterback, and still get the start the next year. Well, first of all, the Bills really didn't have any other choice, right? He had a really bad rookie season in 2018, and to say otherwise would just be a lie. Like, 10 touchdowns in 16 games is really bad. 12, 12 interceptions isn't that bad, but the fact is he had less touchdowns than interceptions. That's not a good thing. And you say, well, the next year, what happened? Well, the Bills assigned Stefan Diggs. Okay, 2019, the Bills assigned Stefan Diggs, and he actually gets a real wide receiver. Holy moly. I mean, the completion percentage is actually still kind of low, uh, but it's a lot better. It goes up six points. You get way more yards, about a thousand more yards, double your touchdowns, and even cut down on your interceptions. You know, 20 touchdowns isn't considered to be, like, fantastic eye-popping, like, numbers. These are not eye-popping numbers, but it got the Bills to where they needed to be, right? This was a great improvement from his rookie season. He got coached up, he improved, he fixed his game, he turned it around. The Bills actually, I believe, had a winning record that year after whatever the heck they had in 2018. And he turned it around. He actually started looking like a starting quarterback in the NFL that year. 2020. The Bills got even better. All right. <clears throat> he got even better. Josh Allen performed really well in 2020. Look at this. Every single year, he got better. His completion percentage got to, like, that's an absurd completion percentage. It's just almost 70%. That's basically almost, like, 7 out of 10 passes he's completing that season. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. This rating for a whole season, like, of football is freaking disgustingly good, man. That is probably, that like, holy moly. That's insane that he was able to get a 107 for the whole season that year. And of 37 touchdowns that year. How the heck was Josh Allen not MVP in 2020 and 20, man? There's no way these are not MVP level numbers. Like, this is ridiculous. Just 10 interceptions to 37 touchdowns in 2020. Josh Allen went off that season. To be fair, I think, uh, I think, uh, what's his name? Patrick Mahomes also did, right? Obviously, like, the 2019 season is kind of like, meh. You know, it's like, kind of like, these first two seasons are kind of combined. Like, okay, you did all right. Then this season was like, dang, went off the charts. You know, like, this is good. This is real good right there. And then last season, it kind of fell off a little bit, but still pretty freaking good, though. Like, Still more than 30 touchdowns in one season. That's incredible. Again, over 4,000 yards. A 63% completion percentage, which, like, the completion percentage goes down. But, like, that's pretty average. That's an average completion percent percentage for the NFL. A little bit higher than average, still. So you're talking about a guy that's not only going to be able to produce 4,000 yards for you almost consistently every single year now, it looks like, but a guy that's throwing for 30-plus touchdowns every single year for the last two years, that's pretty incredible. And then, yeah, his rating went down a little bit because he threw 15 interceptions. But that's still, like, less than one interception a game. That's not bad. And you might be thinking, oh, wait, you know, close to one interception a game is pretty pretty bad. And I would say... Well, yeah, but, like, let's be honest, it's the NFL. You're going to throw a few interceptions here or there, and these interception numbers are not that bad. In fact, I think they'd probably be close to average. I, I mean, like, I'd be su surprised if, 
really anyone was throwing anything like less than like 10 or 12 interceptions a season. So yeah, like this might be like on the higher end of the interception like thing, but Peyton Manning threw a whole bunch of interceptions. Uh I think Patrick Mahomes had more last season. I think he did. Patrick Mahomes stats, dude. Lamar Jackson was definitely at. Okay, yeah. He had 13 in, he had, Patrick Mahomes had 13 interceptions last year. Right? Oh, yeah, and I remember a couple of them, too, because the Ravens picked him off a couple times last year. Hell, yeah. Dude, Patrick Mahomes is the reason the Ravens won that game last year against the Chiefs, too, because the, the defense ate Patrick Mahomes alive in that game, and I was happy about it. The Ravens won that game by freaking one point, but I didn't care. I was just so tired of all the Chiefs fans just saying, oh, Lamar can't win, but it's not uh, against Patrick Mahomes, but it ain't about that. We're here to talk about Josh Allen. So, like we've seen, Josh Allen over the years has shown growth. He needs to probably still cut down on the interceptions a bit, but I would again still put him in like that A tier of quarterback, just like uh, Lamar Jackson. I think, you know, you look at Josh Allen, and to me it's kind of like he's still got a little bit more to show, but I think he's a very solid quarterback, and I think he might be even a step ahead of Lamar Jackson at this point because he's had more playoff success. I think, you know, Lamar and Josh Allen are very similar quarterbacks. Heck, Josh Allen has more rushing touchdowns than any other quarterback in the NFL that, uh, over the last few years. That might be a surprise to somebody considering the fact that uh, Lamar Jackson runs more, right? But the thing is, Josh Allen is actually a pretty mobile quarterback, despite the fact that he is more of a, a traditional pocket passer than most other quarterbacks. But he's pretty mobile. Josh Allen can run if he has to. He can. He's got a very uh, good tight spiral pass. He throws a very good pass. Uh, he's a overall very good quarterback. Um, and I think next, let's see. So yeah, he gets a Josh Allen. To me, he gets an A. So NFL teams. The next quarterback that we're gonna be talking about. Go in alphabetical order. So we're down to Cardinals, the Ravens, Falcons, Bills. Now the next team is gonna end up being the Carolina Panthers, which means the next quarterback that we'll be talking about next time is Baker Mayfield, because I'm pretty sure he's gonna be the starter. Alright, so hopefully we catch you all next time. Peace out.